Listen, if you grew up poor or lower class, the statistics say you will be stuck there. And it's not your fault. There are real money and wealth lessons. It would be almost impossible for you to learn from your environment and from your circumstances. You simply don't have the right people there to teach you how to break out of your situation. I want to fix that for you. I want to share the money and wealth lessons you need to become the first millionaire in your family. And the first thing you need to understand is that the system is literally designed to keep you there. Your ignorance about how money and wealth works is someone else's paycheck. Look at credit card companies, for example. Credit card companies actually lose money on their rewards. They only make money from the people who don't understand how credit actually works. These people end up paying late fees and interest and other things that make up 80% of credit card companies' revenue. And so they are counting on your ignorance, not understanding how money and wealth works to make 80% of their revenue. And I hope that sinks in and makes you understand the gravity of the situation. There's no grand conspiracy. No one is like trying to keep you poor. It's just that they see a real opportunity in taking advantage of the fact that you don't know how things work. And so to counteract this, the first thing you need to do if you want to learn how to actually be wealthy is to learn how money works. For example, when interest rates change, do bonds go up or down? How do credit cycles work? How does debt and leverage actually affect the money in your bank account? These are things that are happening whether or not you are paying attention and they are literally moving the numbers in your bank account, how much money you earn and how much money you take home and not understanding them is not an excuse. These forces are still in effect, still controlling your money. So the very first thing you should take away from our chat is you need to understand debt, interest rate, fees, because these things that the system uses to make money off your ignorance will trap you into a cycle where you can't pay off the fees, you can't pay off your debt, and so you're constantly just working your butt off to pay fees, pay interest rates that lock you into your situation. So study these things, understand how they work so you don't fall victim to them. But it's not enough to just understand how debt works. You need to also take lessons from people who are rich. Let me use an example of rich kids. Everyone knows that a rich kid is supposed to end up becoming successful. When you see that next millionaire and you learn that their dad is wealthy or whatever, you're not impressed. But why is that? Is it because they have connections or money or they're born into these things already? That's part of it, but it's not the real reason these kids become successful themselves. They become successful because it is the default binary outcome for their lives. Everyone around them, their family, their parents, their teachers, their friends, all expect these rich kids to become rich themselves. It's the default option for them. So no one questions when they take those risks. No one questions when they go on to become successful. But if you grew up poor, the default outcome for you is to stay poor. It's this generational wealth cycle that spirals down. And so what will happen is when you start going for things, when you start trying to push yourself, achieve more than you have, people remind you where you're from. They say, hey man, like we grew up together. Like, what do you think you're doing? Who are you trying to be? Come on, like that's not us. And these little reminders are actually what keeps so many people in poverty because their environment reinforces, hey, your default option is to stay poor. And so with this, you have really two options. The first is you can choose to just try to like iron will through it. You can say, I'm going to lock myself in my room, work super hard and just stay steadfast and focused. That doesn't usually work because it's so hard to be an extreme outlier in your environment that you will often end up reverting back to your old behavior. What worked for me and what I'd recommend for you is find a way to get in rooms where you are the least successful person. There's a quote that I love around this, which says, you need to get in rooms where your dreams are just there Tuesday. And this is so true. Like for me, when I was broke, probably the most important thing I did is I literally booked a one-way ticket from South Carolina to San Francisco to surround myself with tech entrepreneurs because I knew that they had something that I didn't have. And I needed to absorb and learn the lessons from them. And once you start to surround yourself with more successful people, you're also going to find that you need to unpack your money wounds. See, if you grew up poor, you have all these unconscious biases and unconscious beliefs that are controlling your life and the way you even think about money. In fact, here's a money belief that probably controls way more of your life than you even realize. It's this idea that to get rich, you need to screw over other people. This idea is rooted in what's called an absolute sum game. An absolute sum just means that there is a set number of pieces in a game. And if you want to get more pieces for yourself, the only way you can accumulate pieces is to take them from someone else. But money actually isn't an absolute sum game. It's what's known as a positive sum game. Let me give you an example. 
let's say you want to build a new home and you have $500,000 that you're going to pay for this home. You go and you find a builder and you give them $500,000 to build this new home. A year later, they give you the home and that home is worth $500,000. But the builder still has the $500,000 that you gave them. So you haven't actually taken any money from the builder. You now have a $500,000 home. They have the $500,000. The money has multiplied. And this is how money works. And when you start to actually internalize this and understand that making money is not about taking other people's stuff. It's about finding ways where everyone wins. You will start to see that making money is a good thing for both sides. And you need to understand this. And that's just one example, but you probably have so many bad money beliefs if you're anything like I did. Maybe things like money doesn't grow on trees or we can afford that or money is the root of all evil. Listen, a lot of people like to call money evil by sort of referencing Bible verses. And yet in Genesis, one of the wealthiest people in the entire Bible is Abraham, the first covenant with God. And, and the Bible says that Abraham had so many possessions that he and his nephew Lot could not even put them on one piece of land. And they had to move to separate pieces of land to hold all of their possessions. Like this is Genesis 16. And when you start to unpack this, you will realize that the things that you learned about money were not actually rooted in biblical trainings or religious trainings or anything like that. They were rooted in simply a lack of understanding. And it's not your fault that you were told these things, but it is your fault if you continue to carry them forward for the rest of your life and let it affect you, your loved ones, and those around you. So if you really wanna become the first millionaire in your family, you need to learn how rich people think. And I'm not talking about the kids that you see on TikTok, how to make $10,000 a month, or the latest sort of flashy dropshipper on YouTube. I'm talking about true wealth, people worth hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars. And these people are hard to get into the room. I've met a lot of them, but it took me many, many years. So when you're starting out, you don't have the option to get into the rooms with these people, but you do have the option to get into their brains. And the way you're gonna do that is you need to read autobiographies. Three that I would really recommend are Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, founder of Nike, The Hard Thing About Hard Things by Ben Horowitz, and Total Recall by Arnold Schwarzenegger. What I want you to do is read these books, one for inspiration. They're cool, they have awesome stories. You're gonna love just like seeing them in the war stories. But what I really want you to pay attention to is look at the way they think about making money. Look at the way that they talk about becoming wealthy. Try to pick up on the mindsets that they have that are different maybe from your mindsets. If you read enough of these books, you will start to reframe your thinking and your limiting beliefs that have been holding you back. And I would go crazy about this. Like I would pay very close attention to what words do they use? What vocab is common for them? You need to train yourself to think like a rich person. Anyways, these are the things that have worked for me. I hope they help you too. These are lessons that have taken me, you know, 30 plus years to learn. And it's just a real joy and honor to be able to share them with you. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.